for tiles are to be used to calculate variance uh, to see how much variance that I have if I have considered me median is a measure of central tendency. Uh, what is quartiles? Quartiles is when we divide the data into four different parts, maybe four different regions, four different units, just to calculate that how the data is being segregated into different different quarters. Okay, these are called quartiles. So we have Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 sort of thing. When Q1 is the first layer, first 25 percent of the data. Q2 is the second layer of the data. And Q2 is also median because that is the middle of the data. Q3 is the 75% uh, of the data and Q4 is the remaining sort of the data. So that's how we'll be able to calculate quartiles. Okay. So if I want to calculate quartile, uh, how do I do that? Let's say I prepare a data here from 10 to 50 here. I'm just making some extreme values here. I'm taking data for, let's say, 16 data points here. Okay. Now if I want to calculate the quartiles, how will be able to do that? So I have to calculate N1, Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4, which means earlier we were looking at average. Earlier we were looking at median, wherein we were just looking at the average. Now we are looking at the variance part, wherein we are, wherein we have divided the data into four different parts, when which would help us to identify that which of these particular quartiles where we need to focus on, where we have the major contribution or where we have the major problem. So to calculate that, it's very simple. First of all, let me tell you the formula. So it is, you have the quartile formula here. Okay. So you use a data set here, you comma and use one. So you'll be able to calculate Q1. So in this data set, 20.75. So if somebody wants to ask you, what is the first 25% of the population? That's 20.75. If I want to calculate Q2 here, so I'll use the same formula for tile and then I will bracket two here because I'm calculating the second quartile of this data, which is 25.5. Okay. If I want to calculate quartile three, I'll just copy here. I'm just changing it to three here. It's 37. Uh, tile four. Timurpreet, you will also have to change the range of the data. It's shifting down with the formulas. So if you go to Q3, the quartile 3, uh, the formula is taking it from uh, row 2. It is taking from I2, so it should be from I1 here. Yeah. So this is my Q1, this is my Q2, this is my Q. So this is my 25%, this is my 50%, this is my 75%, this is my 100%, okay? This gives me an indication that where majority of the data lies. So if I want to say it that What is the minimum value here? Uh, if I want to sort it here. Okay. So between 13 to 20.75, I have 25. Okay. Of my data. So this gives me an opportunity to identify that which of the buckets has, so let's say these are the number of defects kind of an issue. This will give me a positional value to look at which of the quartiles require focus and therefore I can work on it. So similarly for quartile two, 
I have 25.5. Okay, so uh, after 20.75, I have uh, the value as 22. So 22 to 25.5 is the 50 percent. And after 25.5, I have 28, 28 to 36.5 is 75%. And after 36, I have 38 is the remaining 25, so 100. So this is how my data 46. is being. 46. So this is the role of quartiles, which would help me to identify that what is my Q1, what is my Q2, what is my Q3, what is my Q4. So the formula or the, the uh, method to do is first of all, calculate your minimum and maximum. And in between Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And this would give you in quartiles. And that's why it is linked with uh, median because these numbers are not impacted by extreme values. And that's why in order to calculate uh, the uh, measure of dispersion in case of a median, we calculate quartiles. And here you can see, you can calculate Q1, you can calculate Q Q2. Likewise, in standard deviation, we only had one thing to calculate standard deviation for the data. But in median, you can show or interpret the data in four different ways. You can calculate Q1. If you want to show the 25% coverage, you want to show the 50% coverage, 75% or the remaining. So that's how I would be able to articulate how my data lies in between. So, so that's what is quartile. And there is a formula also which we want to do it. It is n plus one minus four because when we calculate median, we do n plus one minus two. Q2 is equal to median. That's why we uh, use two n plus one and Q3, we do three n plus one divided by four. So that's how this is a formula. Uh, but majority of the times when we have big data set, uh, we always focus on the calculating it using Excel. Any question, any question on quartile? Uh, yeah. So, see, when, when we look at the formula, I mean, okay, it, even if they are not uh, like uh, they are not affected by any extreme values, but they are still dependent on the number of values. Uh, but when uh, when you took the uh, if you go back to the Excel uh, in third and fourth, we have take, in Q3 and Q4 formulas, uh, they, you have put in uh, you know, like in extra data point, the, uh, you know, so the value of n has changed for Q3 and Q4, mm -hmm. but it still has not affected the actual value of Q3 and Q4. Uh, if it's not, do, let's say M3, mm -hmm. uh, if you highlight M3, uh, uh, sorry, not N, M. Yeah, so you can see here you have taken the quartile for uh, I1 through I17, whereas for Q1 and Q2 you have taken from I1 to I16. So mm -hmm. even though you have added uh, an N, it has still not uh, changed the value for the quartile. Which value have not changed? Uh, so if you go up, you'll see that you've taken the range I1 through I16 for uh, M1 and M2. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So here it's I1 through I16 and in Q3 it's I1 through I17 and for Q4 you've taken I1 through I18. But it still it has not changed the, uh, I mean, it has not affected the Q3 and Q4. Just a second. I think the formula didn't work here. Just a second. It's the same, right? 
It is the same, yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's what I, I was just wondering why is it. Uh, it would be because the last value it is taking is zero, blank, right? That's mm -hmm. why it's not having any impact on the average. Uh, even even if it is taking it blank, it would put it at the, you know, like at the top of the list because it's, the way it's happening. The same. It's, yeah, exactly. No, that's what, I, what it was my wonder. Even if they have got no value, still what we are doing is we are adding n, adding it to n. So, like uh, in the first two, initially the n that was taken was 16, i1 through i16. But yeah. in the third one, in the third quartile, the n changed to 17 and in Q4, it changed to 18, but still it didn't have any impact on. The data. The actual value yeah. of right, right, right. And the reason reason why it is because it doesn't focus on the values. It doesn't calculate the entire average. It focuses on the position of the value. And okay. therefore, therefore, if I calculate Q4, so what it does what it has done is this data has let me do it. This data has 16 data points. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these first four is for Q1. This is for Q2. This is for Q3. And this is for Q4. Maybe one more. Uh, yeah. Eight, nine, nine, eleven, twelve. Yeah. This is this is for. Okay. Okay, uh, so can you change the value for M1 from I1 to, to I17? Which value you want me to change? Uh, for quartile 1, can you change, try changing the range for that? The value for quartile 1, yeah. Instead of I1 through I16, can you make it I1 through I18 or something? I18? There yeah. is nothing in, there is nothing in there in I18. Uh, yeah, but uh, I just wanted to see if, uh, okay. if, if changing n makes any change there. No, earlier it was, it, it, it didn't change. It didn't because, change. Okay. Because, because there is no value there. If you put some value here, mm -hmm. then, then it will change. Then it will change okay. everything. Then it will change Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Because, because the quartiles on the likes of median, mm -hmm. it, it is not impacted by the extreme values. Okay. And if there are if there are extreme values in it, mm -hmm. then in that case, if I calculate uh, the median here, uh, if I calculate the quartile here, it will not give me a correct picture. So if you want to try that, let's do that. Let's let's do that. Let me put hundred here. Let me put hundred and five here. Okay. So I've just entered the extreme values here. I should rather do a standard deviation here, but I'm doing a quartile here. Let's do it quickly. Not take much time. And that will clear your doubt. And that's a good question that you ask. So, uh, so it is Q, uh, uh, I one two. how much, what is the range? 18, 18. 18. So I'm just using this row so that we can do the comparison. Okay. I'm not doing it on the same thing. So very simple. So I just, so I just select an Let me just change the values here. I one. Eighteen. Two. One. Eighteen. Three. One, eighteen, and four. So let's look at it now. Since सबसे ज़्यादा impact Q4 पे आया, why? Because the Q4, because the later stage has got an extreme values. Yeah. Okay, because it is arranged in a range setting. The rest of the values may not have a significant impact, but your last population, because these are the number of defects. Maybe if I'm doing it for a particular month or a particular week, in the last week of the month or in the last day of the month, I've got I produce this majority of the defect. 
so this this tells me that this quartile has a major number of uh, variants which needs to be looked at because why it is variance because it is taking the entire quartile into consideration if there were 100 data points it would have taken 25 25 25 if there were 1000 data points or 2000 data points it would have taken similarly like that so wherever there is a wherever there is a variance if i would have variance here in between maybe after 28 i would have put 59 and then i would have a symmetric data like 65 72 so it would have shown me variation in the q3 not on the q4 so wherever there is a wherever there is a huge variance it will impact so this q1 q2 q3 q4 tells me that which quartile has huge amount of variance which needs to be fixed so this is more powerful than standard deviation if i look at that way because that gives me the entire data set but this gives me one more layer of data which says that if you only work on Q3, pe kaam kar loge, variance, pe, you'll be able to yield more results rather than focusing everywhere. So uh, likewise, on this example, our focus is on Q4 only. Uh, Simar, just a question here. Uh, while, while we are looking at the 16 or 17 data points here, when we have a huge data set uh, and we calculate the quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, the range that you have calculated, like 13 to 20.75, or, or uh, the ones, how do we actually determine technically whether we should go for a Q1 or a Q2 or a Q3, uh, which, which has the max variance there? So we will never be able to do it manually. So I am, I've just, uh, you know, taken 220, let's take 225 data points here. I have taken 225 data points. I don't need to arrange it in ascending or descending order. So this is a data set that I have. Let's say these are the number of uh, defective goods that that are being done. So there was a volume that was there, but out of that, these are the number of defects. Now I want to know from this data given data set, which positioned quartile needs to be more looked at. Okay. Is it the first 25% of the data? Second 25% of the data? Third, third or fourth. Okay. Now I have a humongous data, which is for 225 data point, which is, I think a respectable sample size. Uh, 